the biblical story of the flood and Noah's Ark actually happen? I mean, there's so many people that doubt that it even occurred. And I'm not just talking about intellectual secularists. Even a ton of Christians aren't convinced that there was a massive flood that destroyed the entire earth. But what this guy shares in this video is going to pique your interest at the very least. So I want you to lean in right now, especially if you're skeptical, and I want to ask you this. Can you refute any of the claims that this man is making? Check out the video. Before we start the video, my name is Cap Chaffield. If we haven't met, I create content for the kingdom and I also train creators to do the same. If you want to learn more about that, you can click the link to my website in the description. Now back to the video. Are you open to scientific evidence that could show that it had to be formed from a catastrophic event called the flood? Oh, yeah. I could, yeah, I could. Maybe, yeah. If you want to. Can I share uh, it with yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Scientific fact number one, the Colorado. So he is, by the way, at the Grand Canyon. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. He's at the Grand Canyon. Notice how he opens this. He opens this with a, a gen, uh, genuine, humble question. Do you mind if I share with you some information that would point to this, the Grand Canyon in the United States of America being created because of a flood rather than through over time, the water from the Colorado River eroding it and creating the Grand Canyon. That's the setup here. So now here's the facts that he presents to each of these people. Scientific fact number one, the Colorado River starts 3,000 feet above sea level. We're 7,000 feet above sea level. There's no way for a river that starts 3,000 feet above sea level to go uphill and carve out a canyon that's 7,000 feet above sea level. Scientific fact number two, on top of where we're standing, there used to be another mile of dirt that has been removed for tens of thousands of square miles. Okay. The Grand Canyon is missing 900 cubic miles of dirt. Mm -hmm. These layers represent 130,000 cubic miles of dirt. Okay. A huge difference. Yeah. Fact number three, all those layers were laid down very quickly. There's no erosion marks in between the layers, which is what you'd get if they were laid down slowly over millions of years. And there's no growth of root structures into the layers, which means they didn't even have time to grow roots or trees. There's no way those were laid down over millions of years. Okay. All those layers were laid down very quickly. When a river carves out a canyon, it forms a delta at the end and it deposits all the sediment. Right. You can't find the sediment at the, in the delta. There's actually a very small delta. Whatever washed this out, came through with so much force and so much water, it even washed the delta away. This tells us it couldn't have been the Colorado River for a long period of time. It had to be very, very quickly. So if all these layers were laid down at the same time, and there's a mile of strata that's missing from this whole area, and the Colorado River starts at 3,000 feet above sea level, what would it have taken to remove all that sediment? Not just this, but all of that sediment. All the ice age. Uh, I have no idea. Humans destroyed everything. Prehistoric monsters. And then the second ice age. And Maybe some miracle. The prehistoric, uh, what are they? What do you call them? <laughs> Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. What do you think? Water. It had to be water. Well, it would make sense with like a huge giant flood. John, what do you think? But You're the one down What happened here. to all the water after the flood? Well, it's still here. 70% of the earth is actually covered by water. Yeah. And so it's actually still out there. The ocean sank down and the water that was covering the continents ran off into the low spots, causing all the erosion that we see today. Do you think that makes sense? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could. Yeah, it does. I mean, maybe. The flood covered all the high hills, that it wasn't just in one area, that it actually was worldwide. And when you look at the world today, it's 70% covered with water. with water. Does that help change your mind? Could possibly. I think it sounds logical. That does yeah. sound logical? Yeah. Think that could have happened? <laughs> well, it could happen. Well, I'm not like extremely re religious, but yeah, it could be. Why not? That makes sense. Yeah. Would that make sense of a mile of dirt being Easy. gone from right here? I, yeah, I think so. Super, super cool. Here's what I would tell you I am not uh, an archaeologist. I'm not that smart when it comes to science. I'm not going to pretend like I fully understand how that could function. I, I, I don't even know if everything that he's saying is true. I can't imagine that what he's saying is false about the elevation between the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon. 
I would invite you go and fact check all of these things. Go and leave it in the comments below because what I desire out of this video is to at least begin a conversation. I'm very interested in this topic because I believe as a believer in Jesus Christ, having encountered God myself, as many billions of Christians on planet earth and in human history have, I know, as it says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that all scripture is breathed by God, is inspired by God. And so I look at someone like this and for me, I, I just don't, I don't have any problem doubting that God, the stories that we read in the Bible are true. I just don't have any problem with that. But for the sake of those whose intellect gets in the way of, you know, of really encountering God because you're dealing with the stories of Noah's Ark and even Jonah and the giant fish and all these things that like, you're like, what? This, that sounds way too supernatural and miraculous. I've never seen anything like that happen before. But I do want to also submit to you this. The story of the flood is not unique to Judaism and Christianity, which both lean on the ancient story of Noah and his ark and the flood. But you also see this story in Islam, in Hinduism, in ancient literature about Mesopotamia, in ancient Greece, in ancient China, Native American folklore, and even Aboriginal Australian folklore. And so what this tells us is did all of these cultures that a lot of them have were from what we see years and years and years apart from each other on different sides of the planet, all of these different cultures have a unique story about a flood. They have a consistent story, I should say, about a flood. And there's a little bit of different details around each of these stories, but they all recognize that some sort of flood occurred. Isn't that interesting? I just think that this is worth considering. I think it's worth uh, us going deeper in as Christians. And here's what I'd final, finally say. Here's the charge that I'll give you. I said this in previous videos. I want to give you this charge again. We as Christians, if we want to flip culture upside down, we need to not be afraid of the questions that culture has. We need to go out and engage in the culture. We need to go out and engage in intellectual conversations with scientists and archaeologists and all these sorts of people. We need Holy Spirit filled Christians who are smart, who can go out and defend the faith in these different areas of life. And I'm not just talking about in science. I'm talking about in law. I'm talking about in the medical field. I'm talking about entrepreneurs and influencers and entertainers and even stay at home moms and even janitors and even people, people who do paperwork and mechanics. Guys, you and I are called to go and represent the kingdom of God in all these places. But I've seen so many Christians become timid when it comes to anything intellectual. And here's what I would want to remind you. Paul, the apostle in the book of Acts, he went from city to city in a uh, in an empire, in the Roman empire, where the intellect was supreme, where people were, they basically worshiped at the altar of their intellect and how smart they were and how innovative they were, and how progressive they were. And he reasoned with these people, showing them the truth of the Messiah who, who's come for us, Jesus Christ, who died for us 2,000 years ago on a cross for your sin and my sin to forgive us so that we might have peace with God. And on the third day, resurrecting himself from the grave by the power of the Holy Spirit. Guys, you and I, it's time for us to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. Amen. Guys, God bless you. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think this is a really interesting topic. I want to, you know, bring the disclaimer again. I'm not an expert in this, but I would love to hear from an expert. I would love to hear some counter arguments to all of these things. And ultimately, I want this to be a place where we can have a uh, a conversation, a dialogue about these things with humility so that we can all come to the unity, to unity of the truth together. Amen. Because even as Christians, if we're wrong, we should want to seek the truth because Jesus himself said that he is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through him. Let me know in the comments, like this video, share it with somebody that you know, and subscribe for more. See you in the next one.